It's Trump from the Commander's Brew. This week it's Denry Clint, editor in chief, brand new commander from the new Capenna Commander decks, and it's a cat that's in charge of a newspaper. Denry Clint. I think one of the most obvious things to do is to just cast Henry Clint, put a ton of counters on him, and then buff up all future creatures. The most obvious way to go is probably plus one, plus one counters. So let's start there, but let's do a little exploring and see if we can't dig a little bit deeper. I'd love to find an interesting angle for Denry Clint. Let's start with lands. Animal Sanctuary is going to be great because, as I said, Denry Clint's cat, so we get to put a counter on our commander, which will in turn get transferred to other creatures. Forge of Heroes not that expensive. We can put an extra counter on our commander if it entered this turn, which makes him cost one more effectively, which is kind of bad sometimes. This card might be bad. Tyrite Sanctum, though, I think is pretty good. We can put a plus one plus one counter on a legendary creature, even if it didn't enter the battlefield this turn. And then later on, we can put an indestructible counter on it, which will actually be pretty useful for Denry Clin, because as I said, any creature that comes in after Denry Clin will get all the counters, including indestructible counters. If you got the commander deck Luminarch Aspirants already in there, pretty nice way to get more counters on Denry Clin for free every turn as long as you've spent the two mana to cast this thing. I think Tawashi Guidebot is going to be an interesting include in the deck from the Neon Dynasty set. We get to put a counter on something, and getting four modified creatures isn't that difficult, I don't think, so we'll be able to just tap and draw a card every turn. That's pretty nice. And I think Steel Dromedary is interesting. It will never untap. If it enters after we've cast Henry Clint, it'll enter with a ton of plus one plus one counters, but it's sort of like a worse Luminarch Aspirant, but it does one every turn kind of for free. And I think it's worth considering there's a version of this deck where you do a lot of bouncing. Cards like Teo's Light Shield comes in and puts a counter on Denry Clint or somewhere more appropriate. Honestly, we're always putting counters on Denry Clint, right? And then something like Soul Herder goes in the deck too, so we can keep bouncing things for extra value. It's all about those ETBs. Plus Soul Herder gets bigger, not to mention it might have a bunch of plus one plus one counters already on it for having come into play after Denry Clin. And having some plus one plus one counters is good, but we want lots of plus one plus one counters. Once we get rolling, we're going to want to cast stuff like Star Pupil. It does enter with a plus one plus one counter, but hopefully it'll enter with five or six plus one plus one counters. And if it dies, we get to put them anywhere. Maybe back on Denry Clin for more action moving counters around. Iron Apprentice is functionally the same thing, but it's a colorless card. And obviously the Ozolith belongs in the deck, but it's uh, over 20 bucks now. So if you got the cash, why not? Or if you already have an Ozolith, also why not? I think Gleam of Authority is an interesting card to put on something. We are surely get plus 10, plus 10, something massive from this. And it'll also have Vigilance, so we'll be able to attack without leaving ourselves open to counterattack. And if we can get it on something that's unblockable, foreshadowing. This card will do a lot of work. This is very much of an eggs in one basket kind of deck. It's all about protecting our commander, so we better be running a few ways to protect him. Feet of Resistance is a nice way to protect us from spot removal, and it does add a counter to Denry Clin, which is nice. And there's a world where we'll make something unblockable and get it through if our opponent only has one color of creatures to block. Remember Gleam of Authority? Slip Out the Back is a new instant from New Capenna that does the same thing saves a creature from a removal spell or a board wipe, and we get to put a plus one plus one counter on them. Unbreakable Formation is a great instant that can protect the whole team from a board wipe, for example, or something like that, but it can also add a bunch of plus one plus one counters to things if we do it on our turn. Brace for Impact is interesting. Uh, I don't know that it'll be worth putting in the deck for its five mana cost, but uh, preventing any damage to Denry Clin and then putting a ton of plus one plus one counters on him could be pretty cool. If your meta is full of blasphemous acts and stuff like that, you might want to run something like this. Allenbach Escort is going to be on the battlefield, definitely protecting Denry Clin with a little bit of an indestructibility shield. And Boon of Safety sort of protects Denry Clin too. It'll put a shield counter on him. So if someone's trying to destroy Denry Clin, this kind of cancels it out. We just get the scry one. But if we were able to put a shield counter on him and then cast other creatures, we can put shield counters on those creatures too. Speaking of those creatures, Invisible Stalker is probably the face of all unblockable creatures, even though you can't even see his face. A little bit of irony there for you. Can't be blocked. Hexproof. 
put a bunch of counters on this and the game's gonna end pretty soon if no one can deal with it. Miss Cloak Herald, same deal. Slither Blade, another unblockable creatures. Gadoo Lurker is another one mana 1-1 one, one that can't be blocked, but the Mega Morph gave me an idea. Are there any morphs or manifests that we can use to our advantage? I think Cloud Form's interesting because it's gonna enter the battlefield, will manifest something, and that will count as a non-token creature. So we'll move all of the counters from Denry Clin over to this manifest. And if it happens to be something cheap, a little creature, we can flip it up and get those benefits too. Maybe like a star pupil or something like that. But it'll have flying and hexproof, so it'll be a difficult threat to deal with. Scroll of Fate's another way to get a little bit of extra action here, because we can tap to just manifest a card from our hand, but we'll know what it is. If it's a one mana blue unblockable thing, I'm happy to manifest that for free and then flip it up for a single blue when the time's right. It's also a way to get rid of extra lands and turn them into actual creatures that'll get a bunch of counters from Denry Clin. So we've been putting a ton of plus one plus one counters on Denry Clin and on a bunch of our other creatures. So obviously we're interested in proliferating. Grateful Apparition, Thrumming Bird, Skyship Plunderer isn't quite a proliferator, but these three cards did come into the pre-con, so if you've got it, you've got these three cards, and they make sense to be in the deck. So if you've got a little extra room and you want to put something spicy in there, Sword of Truth and Justice. I'm not a huge fan of them personally because I don't like just putting general protection on things. I don't like cards that prevent the game from being played. You can't touch my stuff, so let's see how long it takes me to win. Not a fan. But it does do everything the deck wants to do. Puts a plus one plus one counter on Denry Clin and then proliferates. And of course, if you're proliferating, you're going to want fuel for the cause, which is the counter spell with proliferate and Tezzeret's Gambit, which is also in the broker's pre-con. So we've built a shell here where we can potentially do a ton of damage. So let's see if we can get any bonuses from doing damage. You want T Malasson? Is he French? Malasson. Can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone, which, you know, if we've got enough plus one plus one counters on this little thing, I'm happy to let it attack alone. But if it's one of multiple in my army of creatures with dozens of plus one plus one counters on them, I'll swing them with the team. Either way, when he deals combat damage, we get to venture. A little extra value. Bladed Agent is kind of a automatic include in this deck. That does make it an infect deck, though. The word appears in our 99 cards, so we're an infect deck. Better say something in the rule zero conversation. But I don't need to remind you that we just need to have nine counters on Denry Clin, cast Blighted Agent, and now we've got a 10-10 Infect. That can't be blocked. It's pretty scary. I think Cephalid Constable is an especially interesting way to do damage because if we can do damage with this, having a bunch of counters on it from Denry Clin, we're going to return a ton of permanence from our opponents to their hand. And it doesn't say non-lands. We can just suck all their lands back into their hand. We might want something like Key to the City to make it unblockable. Heck, I'm happy to discard cards to draw anyway. That's just some good cycling late game if I don't need my lands. So those are the plus one plus one counters. That's sort of where we're going with that. But can we do something more interesting? Are there any other weird counters we can put on Denry Clint to pass over? We talked about some shield counters and an indestructible counter popped up with a Tyrite Sanctum. So what else we got? So Luminous Broodmoth. It's 10 bucks, but it's a good card. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't want my commander to die and then be returned with a flying counter. I'll lose all those plus one plus one counters. I think that's OK. I think we're meant to just cast Luminous Broodmoth and just swing for the fences. And if creatures die, they will be returned to the battlefield. Denry Clin will trigger. We'll move all the counters onto it with a flying counter in addition. I think in a way you don't want flying counters on Denry Clin so that these new creatures that keep reappearing with flying, well, it wouldn't work if they already had flying. So Kindred Boon is interesting too. You got to do a little bit of work here. Stick with me. It enters the battlefield and we pick Cat. Then we pay two to put a divinity counter on Denry Clin, who is a cat. Then each creature you control with a divinity counter has indestructible. So Denry Clin is now indestructible by virtue of having a divinity counter on him. And as new creatures come in, they won't have indestructible counters, but they'll have divinity counters. So it will count for this. Splendor Mare is an easy one. We just got to cycle it to put a lifelink counter on Denry Clin. That gets passed over. Avenging Hunt Bonder comes with the commander deck, but uh, every time it attacks, we can put a double strike counter on another target attacking creature. We've got to be attacking with Denry Clint to get one on him, but uh, we've got shield counters and destructible counters. We can probably survive a combat. Maybe we use the key to make him unblockable. If we're doing divinity counters, we have to consider the Miogens. 
the Odin of Cleansing Fire, we have to cast it from our hand to get the divinity counter on it. But it'll have a divinity counter if we moved it over from Denry Clin. I haven't built in a way to just cheat this out, though, so we will be having to cast it. But if everyone's got divinity counters, removing the one off of the Myojin to destroy all the other ones, well, they won't be destroyed. It's a one-sided board wipe. The new Elspeth from New Capenna gives us ways to put some weird counters on Denry Clin. Flying, First Strike, Lifelink, or Vigilance. Contractual Safeguard is another way to spread counters around. We have to cast this on our main phase to put a shield counter on Denry Clin, but then we just pick one of those counters and spread it around. And if we already have something like a Divinity counter, or perhaps we already have a shield counter, this becomes something we can do at instant speed and still get the bonus of the counter. And there's a few ways to move these weird counters around just in case Denry Clin something happens to him, we got to recast him, we got to get those counters back on him. Leech Ponder is a neat one. Having to untap is trivial these days with vehicles. Throw in a few vehicles, you can tap the Leech Ponder to crew something, and now the untap is, I mean, it just costs you the blue. There's no opportunity cost by having to get him into combat. And we get to move counters wherever we want. Lifelink counters, indestructible counters, all those weird ones. Nesting Grounds is the same thing. We get to move a counter from a permanent to another one. Well, that's going to be some weird counter onto Denry Clin for sure. And then Resourceful Defense is a cool enchantment. It's a little bit of a mini Ozolith, but we get to move counters around for five mana. Pricey, but it's an effect the deck I think wants. And so it really does seem like outside of a few of those kind of keyword counters, there aren't really a ton of counters that will actually do anything. There's a bunch of creatures that put counters on things and change them, like feather counters and things like that. But the way they're worded, the feather counters, etc., only do something if it was put there by the original creature. If Denry Clin passes them around, they just sit there not doing anything. So it looks like we're geared out to be a pretty heavy attack deck. Throw in some counter spells, other ways to protect your team, maybe. And I think this is the deck. I do want to highlight a couple more cool creatures, though, that are fun to put a ton of counters on. Herald of Secret Streams is a gimme in the deck. It's a four mana creature that kind of says everything's unblockable on the team. And with all the plus one plus one counters going around, we might be able to swing for lethal in one shot. Walking Ballista obviously isn't included in the deck. I mean, it's another $20 card, but putting a ton of counters on this and then just removing them to do a ton of damage, that's a good game. And I think we're going to want to make room for Linvala Shield of Seagate. I don't think we'll ever have the full party, but that's kind of not the point of this card. The point is being able to sack Linvala and give Hexproof or Indestructible to the whole team. And if she's got a ton of counters on her, It'll be a shame to lose them when we sacrifice her, but maybe we've got an Ozolith kicking around. I don't know. So there's the deck. Thanks for coming with me on that journey to explore Denry Clin and see what we could do with counters. I was hoping to find some more weirder counters to move around, but I still think the deck's fun as is. Let's keep our eyes open for future sets and any other weird counters they might give us. Until next time, keep being you. The world's a better place for it. I mean that. And I'll see you next time.